Hello listeners, hello video viewers, welcome back to Luke's English Podcast. This is the second part of a triple series in which I am reading through some murder mystery detective stories written by Peter Carlson. So I did part one, you've probably heard part one. If you haven't heard part one, go back and listen to that. Uh, but anyway, here is part two, it's called The Wraith, W-R-A-I-T-H, The Wraith. Okay, so listen to me, follow the story See if you can pick up some language in the process. But now, without further ado, here is part two, The Wraith. Let's move on to the next one. I think I can probably do it. How long have I been recording? I don't know. But let's move on to The Wraith. Okay. The Wraith. So, you chase The Wraith, a masked Londoner, with three murders to his name, through a moonlit, derelict warehouse, behind your backed by detectives Mardler, Jennings, Darby, Fleming, and Hertzman. So we're chasing a murderer who is called the Wraith, and he wears a mask. The Wraith has a flair for the theatrics. He likes theatre, he's quite theatrical. He has a flair for the theatrics, and he's always been a step ahead of Scotland Yard. This is the closest you've been to him, no more than ten yards away as you sprint through the dark warehouse. The Wraith looks back at you, his mask cold and mysterious, cape billowing in his wake. He leaps up and throws a small firework up at the ceiling, his gadget of choice you've found. There's a loud crack and bright flash above you and a subtle glint of light at your feet a couple of yards ahead. Okay, sorry, this is action. Suddenly we're chasing after this murderer, this sort of um, mysterious murderer called the wraith and he's thrown a firework up at the uh, uh, the ceiling and loud crack a, bl a bright flash above me and a subtle glint of light at my feet um okay so clearly the explosion of the firework has reflected off something on the floor what is it maybe it's a piece of glass or something like that Sh something sharp i think that i need to jump up and keep running so i jump over this thing Let's see how I get on. Here we go. Deduction success. Okay, brilliant. I got something right. You leap up over the hidden tripwire that the wraith jumped over when he threw the firecracker. Watch the tripwire, you shout as your fellow detectives cautiously step around it. A tripwire is like a little hidden wire. and If you walk through it, you trigger it and maybe an explosion goes off or something. The masked man leads you up flights of stairs to the fifth floor, the top floor of the factory. He looks back again and throws a handful of caltrops on the floor. What on earth are caltrops? Are these those little spikes? What are caltrops, please? Right, it's like those little ninja spike things that a ninja might throw on the floor and then you walk on them and ow, 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 ow. Right, they're like little spikes. They've got one, two, three, four spikes on them. Okay, caltrops. Never heard of that before. So uh, we chase the guy up the, f uh, up the stairs to the top floor. He throws some caltrops on the floor. What do we do? Jump over them, climb over the crates to the left of the caltrops, climb over a heavy work table to the right of the caltrops. So jump over the caltrops, Climb over the crates on the left. Climb over a heavy work table on the right. Okay. Um, so, da, 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 da. so we've just run up some stairs. So I don't know if we've got that much speed to jump over the caltrops. I don't want to jump over the crates on the left because I feel like they're going to be unsteady and they're going to fall over. But the work table on the right is heavy. That's what we're going to climb over. Deduction success. Okay. You avoid the caltrops by climbing up on a work table, stepping over discarded tools. Watch the caltrops, you shout. The other detectives go, what, what, what are caltrops? Wait a minute, let me just Google that. Oh, okay. Watch the caltrops, you shout. The other detectives cautiously climb around the sharp spikes. Detective Fleming climbs up on the crates, but he crashes through a weak one. Right, I told you, the crates would be unstable. Keep going, he cries as he climbs out and follows the group. He's, an, he's cornered himself, yells Mardler, 
in a Cockney accent. He's cornered himself. Cornered, meaning he's stuck in a corner. He's cornered himself, yells Mardler. Freeze! The wraith runs into a dead end. An open room with a large window overlooking London at night. The moon and stars overhead casting glowing light down on the scene. So he's in some room. It's a dead end. There's a large window and the, the moonlight is coming in. He can, you can see London. He stops and pulls an orb out of his cape. An orb is like a kind of a ball, maybe a glass ball or something. Throwing it on the ground. Bang! Chemicals fizz and hiss. And a blinding cloud of white smoke fills the room. The wraith at the centre of it. So he's done that Batman thing. He's thrown like a glass vial on the floor. And white smoke is, is emerging. And he's standing in the middle of it. You know, classic Batman stuff. Chemicals fizzle and hiss, blah, blah, blah. Detectives charge into the smoke, shouting and crashing into each other. I got him! You hear Huntsman shout. A uh, Hertzman. So Hertzman says, I got him! Right, let's continue. The smoke slowly dissipates. So, whew, goes away. After about 30 seconds, and you see Hertzman pinning Detective Jennings to the ground. Oh. So he didn't get the uh, the wraith. He got his uh, he got Detective Jennings instead. Oh God! Get off me, you oaf! An oaf is like a simple idiot, basically. Get off me, you oaf! He shouts as he shoves Hertzman away, sending him crashing into Detective Dorney. Where the hell did that psychopath go? So we've lost him. Look, says Mardler, pointing out the open window across the road on the roof of a five-story hospital. You see the wraith cackling menacingly. Cackling, this means laughing in an evil way. Ha 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 ha. He pulls his cape over his pale mask and disappears into the night, becoming one with the shadows. How in, how in the bloody hell did he get all the way over there? spits Jennings as he rushes to the window. That building is a good 40 or 50 feet away. He's not human. How did he do it? How did he do it, everybody? So you pause and think. So either he used a pulley mechanism to pull himself across, his cape doubles as a glider, and there are two wraiths. Um, hmm. Large window overlooking London, the moon and stars overhead, casting glowing light down on the scene. Duh, 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 duh. I don't remember any indication of a pulley mechanism to pull himself across. His cape doubles as a glider. Maybe, but I mean, this is not Batman stuff, is it? This is the 19th century, and there are two wraiths. I go for this one because the way he covered his face... But he's wearing a mask, for goodness sake. Oh, God. Am I missing something? Am I missing something? Da 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 da. The smoke dissipates. Um, Jennings and uh, Hertzman sort of crash into each other. Five story Harps Hospital. He's cackling menacingly. He pulls his cape up over his pale mask and disappears into the night. I mean, maybe the cape doubles as a glider. Maybe that's it. I mean, he did the Batman throwing the thing on the floor. Why not? No, you know, of course. No way, says Jennings. He was completely stopped when he threw the smoke bomb. Without a running start, it would be impossible to clear that gap. Fair enough. If he hadn't had a run-up, um, he wouldn't have been able to do it. That could just be a body double, says Mardler, not in, not in his accent. That could just be a body double. What was that? I don't know. That could just be a body double, says Mardler. They're trying to confuse us. Jennings looks down at the street below. Then, well then, he must have fallen 40 feet, but no one's down there. Mm, so, okay, I think it might be... 
Mm, it might be a double on the other building and he never left the room. He's still in the room with them. He climbed down. He used a parachute. He never went down. He's still in the room. The other one was a, was a body double, which is what I should have chosen before. He never went down. He's still in the room. Yes, I'm right. It would have taken too long to climb and the drop is too short for some type of parachute, you say. The wraith never left. He's hiding somewhere in the warehouse. The seven, of you, this, <laughs> the seven of you start looking for secret doors and hiding places. Darby calls everyone over after see, Darby calls everyone over after a few minutes of searching. It's his cape and mask, Darby says, pulling out the large black dis, pulling out the large dark disguise. He must have stashed it behind this crate after he threw that smoke bomb. Okay. So we know he's hiding in the warehouse. We look for secret doors and hiding places. Darby, who I guess is one of the other detectives, but I can't remember him, Darby, Hertzman, Jennings, Mardler, and Darby as well, I don't remember. Anyway, Darby calls everyone over after a few minutes of searching. It's his cape and mask. So we found the cape, the thing on his back, the mask. It's his disguise. He must have stashed it, like hidden it behind this crate after he threw that smoke bomb. Who is Darby? I don't remember anyway. Ah, uh, ah, okay. There's Dorney as well, and Fleming. I can't remember any of these people. But I'm definitely... Um, so, who are you most suspicious of? That's what we have to do next. Who am I most suspicious of? I think it's Darby, because he found the disguise, and I don't remember any mention of him before. It's Darby. No. <laughs> no, that's not right. You think for a moment, and a theory hits you. There were six of us chasing the wraith, you say, as you swiftly move across the dark room. And yet now, <laughs> there are seven. You reach out and grab Detective Dorney by the arm. You have faint marks on your face where a mask once tightly rested, you say. I don't remember you being part of the search party for the wraith. What's this in your sleeve? So wait a minute, there's a whole other cop there that we just didn't remember before? What's this in your sleeve? Dorney tries to pull away, right? He tries to pull himself away, but you grip him tightly and pull a small firecracker out of his sleeve. Saving this for later, Dorney. You should have hidden this with the cape and mask after you threw that smoke bomb. You're under arrest. Dorney fights back, grabbing your arm and twisting it around. He pulls out his pistol and waves it around menacingly. I never liked you, he laughs into your ear as he fires off around into the ceiling, bits of wood and plaster raining down. He yanks you close, using you as a human shield. <laughs> so, uh, I can't believe that... How? Wait a minute. So, are we suggesting that the, the wraith disappeared and then sort of took off his disguise and pretended to be one of the policemen called Dorney. How did they, how would they know that he was called Dorney? That's a bit ridiculous, but I'm willing to go along with it. So Dorney is now fighting back. He's grabbed me, us, you, every, he's grabbed us, pulled us towards himself. He's got his pistol, he's shot it in the air, and then he's holding us as a human shield. Nobody move, he barks. I want everyone to put their guns on the floor. I'm in control here. Why are you doing this, Dorney? Says Darby. You're the wraith? Just shut up, yells Dorney. Guns on the ground, now! You can leave this warehouse in handcuffs, or you can leave this warehouse in a body bag, says Hertzman. Wow. Very cool, Hertzman. I mean, he's got a name... I mean, his name is Hertzman, so he sounds like the coolest one. You can leave this warehouse in handcuffs, or you can leave this warehouse in a body bag, says Hertzman. How do you want it? <laughs> so, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to throw the firecracker, or headbutt Dorney, bam, like that, probably with the back of the head, wrestle Dorney's gun away, or just remain calm and do nothing. I think it's pretty obvious what we've got to do. We've got to throw the firecracker. Although, I don't know why that would help. So he's got me like that, and I just 
throw the firecracker and over there it goes bang and he goes why did you do that <laughs> you know or it goes bang and he goes ah and then you elbow him in the solar plexus that sensitive bit right in the middle of your chest bang grab the gun and shoot him just bang 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 just empty the the, the magazine into him no nah, you shouldn't do that should you, you shouldn't really no i think we're going to fire throw the firecracker and then do those things that i said definitely no wrong you throw the firecracker down on the ground bang there's a blinding flash of light and dawny fires oh dear dawny fires out of instinct his bullet lethally grazing your throat you stumble to the floor coughing up blood a sudden chill running through your body everything goes dark the end okay great we died what does that mean can i can i do that again okay and let me try and get back through uh the this so the thing about the wraith was we jumped over the trip wire we climbed over the work table we continue um there are two wraiths yes uh he never went down to the street uh okay we continue we are suspicious of detective dawney let's say all right and uh right headbutt dawney wrestle his gun or do nothing hmm 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 there's no option to just have a cup of tea on this list um so the next best thing is to just remain calm and do nothing that's what i would like to do is just have a little sit down let's all just have a little sit down have a cup of tea okay and wait for this to blow over uh or since i don't have that option the next best thing is just remain calm and do nothing no okay no i've got that wrong as well and i'm dead again you comply with dawney's sudden insanity as he slowly backs away from the other detectives you know, most criminals haven't seen a policeman's point of view, Dorney says, but I have. I know how terrible the prisons are. I know I'll be beaten and hanged for what I've done. I don't want any part of that. Dorney raises the pistol to his own head and fires, <laughs> his brains splattering across the warehouse and all over the back of your neck. You stumble away from his lifeless body as it falls backwards and crashes to the floor. Damn it, yells Jennings. He could have helped us find the other wraith. That sick fiend is still out there. A fiend is like a sort of a monster, basically. Okay, great. So I caused him to kill himself. All right, then. If it's not remain calm and do nothing, and there's no cup of tea option, I'm going to headbutt him. Bang! The classic back of the head. Elbow in the solar plexus. Grab his hand. Judo move. He goes over the shoulder. On his back. You then do that twisting round thing where you twist round on him, you sit on him, you twist the gun round, and then you got him like that, in that position where you're sitting on top of his body with the gun pointing into his face. That's definitely what's going to happen next. Here we go. Headbutt Dorney. Yes. Dorney takes the barrel of his pistol off your temple for a moment, and you strike. You lurch backward, slamming the back of your head against Dorney's nose, the sound of crunching bone echoing through the hollow warehouse. Wow, you hit him so hard that you break his nose. You spin round quick, grabbing Dorney's arm and twisting his hand until the stunned detective drops his revolver. You do a bit of Aikido on him. Wrestling Dorney to the ground, you go from hostage to captor in a matter of seconds. From hostage to captor. A captor is someone who has captured someone. The other detectives rush over and help pin Dorney down. To pin someone down is to hold them on the ground so they can't get up. Uh, they pin Dorney down as you stand up and take a deep breath. You're going to tell us about the other wraith, Dorney, you say. And that's it. We did it. Badly, but we got there in the end. So the story there was that Dorney and some other wraith had been working in cahoots with each other. So a couple of psychopaths working together, making it look like there was only one of them. And Dorney was a police officer, so he understood the life, the seedy life of crime in London, so much so that he wanted to take part in it. Weird. So that is the end of part two. There you go, the story, the wraith, which again put my detective skills uh, to the test. 
And did I pass that test? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not really being a fantastic detective today, but it doesn't matter because we're still enjoying the stories. Um, that's it then. Okay, so part three will be available very soon. Maybe it's already available, but anyway, you can check that out. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I will speak to you again soon in the next part, but for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.